In this lesson, I'll show you how to set up the initial simplex tableau. The question reads, set up the initial simplex tableau for the following problem. A farmer has 100 acres of available land on which he wishes to plant a mixture of potatoes, corn, and cabbage. It costs him $300 to produce an acre of potatoes, 60 to produce an acre of corn, and 180 to produce an acre of cabbage. He has a maximum of $20,000 to spend. There are taxes of 5, 10, and 15 per acre of potatoes, corn, and cabbage respectively, and the farm does not want to pay more than 900 in taxes. He makes a profit of $120 per acre of potatoes, 40 per acre of corn, and 60 per acre of cabbage. As you can see, there's a lot of information provided here, and using this information, you have to come up with constraints, and you have to come up with the objective formula. The objective function will be used to maximize or come up with the answer for the maximum profit. So with that being said, the first thing that I want to do is assign letters for the acres of potatoes, corn, and cabbage. And for that I'll use x sub 1, x sub 2, and x sub 3, where this represents the number of acres for potatoes, this represents the number of acres for corn, and this one for cabbage. So I'll write that down. Furthermore, we'll create the objective function next, and to do that we'll use the following information, where we're told that he makes a profit of $120 per acre of potato, so 120 times x1, plus $40 per corn, so x2, plus $60 per cabbage, x sub 3, and that is equal to z, the maximum profit. Early on in the question, we're told that the farmer has 100 acres available of land in which he wishes to plant a mixture of these vegetables. So with that being said, I can write down that x sub 1 plus x sub 2 plus x sub 3 cannot exceed 100 acres. Notice that 100 is greater or equal to everything on the left side. This serves as one of our constraints. In addition, the farmer does not want to exceed $900 in taxes. So we have 5 times the number of acres of potatoes plus 10 times the number of acres of corn plus 15 times the number of acres of cabbage cannot exceed $900 in taxes. The last constraint refers to the cost per acre. And for that, we use the information provided here. It costs him $300 for the potatoes, so $300 times the acres of potatoes, 60 to produce the corn, plus 60 x sub 2, plus 180 for the cabbage. And that, according to the question, cannot exceed $20,000. I'll highlight that information for you. Of course, one more thing that you want to report before you continue on to the next step is to say that x sub 1, x sub 2, and x sub 3 all need to be greater or equal to 0. At this point, you should notice something. Take a look at this constraint and this constraint. Notice that they can be reduced. There is a number that is equally divisible into all four terms. The number that can divide into all four terms is 5. So if I divide all of these terms by 5, this becomes a 1, that becomes a 2, that becomes a 3, and that becomes 180. And the reason why I'm doing this is because, of course, you didn't have to spot this. You could have gone ahead and moved on to the next step without doing this. But by reducing the numbers down, it makes the solving process easier for later on. And also, for here, there is another number that's equally divisible into all four numbers, and that number is 20. So if I divide this by 20, I end up with 15. Dividing this by 20, I end up with 3. And dividing this by 20, I get 9. Of course, dividing 2 by 20 gives me 1,000. So your new constraints, the ones that have just been changed, should look like this. Now that we've done this, the next step in this process is to convert the constraints, the inequalities, into equations. So we can convert this inequality into an equation by introducing a slack variable, which we'll call s sub 1. And I'll add s sub 1 to the left side. Notice that by introducing the slack variable, the inequality becomes an equation, and I've shown that with an equal sign. 
For this inequality, I can introduce a second slack variable. And for each constraint, you introduce a new one. So here I'll add plus s sub 2 and change this into an equal sign. Lastly, I'll do the same thing here. At this point, you want to make note that s sub 1, s sub 2, and s sub 3 need to all be positive. So I will rewrite that here, s sub 1, s sub 2, and s sub 3 need to be greater or equal to 0. The next step is to convert all of these equations into an augmented matrix, which we call the initial simplex tableau. So starting with our first constraint turned into equation, we'll write down the coefficients of each term. So 1, 1, 1, 1. So this column represents x sub 1, x sub 2, x sub 3, s sub 1. There is no s sub 2 or sub 3 in this equation, nor is there a z. So you do need to report that, where you write down 0, 0, and 0, and the constant is 100. For this equation, we have 1, 2, 3, no s sub 1, but there is an s sub 2, no s sub 3, and no z, and the constant is 180. For this one, it's 15, 3, 9, 0, 0, 1, 0, and 1,000. And your objective function always goes last, 120, 40, 60, these three terms need to be on the same side as z. And by doing that, they all become negative. So rather than reporting the positive version, we'll write down negative 120, negative 40, negative 60, no slacks, and the z is 1 with no constant. What you see here is the initial simplex tableau. And just to show that this equation is special compared to the other three, we'll separate this with a line. This is your constant. This is your objective function. So we have accomplished exactly what they want. They want us to set up the initial simplex tableau, and we have. And in one of our next videos, I'll show you how you can solve this and come up with the optimal value. So stay tuned for that, and we hope to see you soon.